माय नेम इज शिखन गुप्ता एंड आई एम आई एम अ कंप्यूटर साइंस ग्रेजुएट फ्रॉम नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी हमीरपुर एंड I uh, worked in Nuja Software. It's a software-based company. So what I was struggling with was verbal only. That I thought uh, needed uh, much more attention. GMAT is not uh, how many questions you are attempting and or how many videos are, are you watching. It's it's like uh, if you are doing just five questions a day, you must be sure that you go through the explanation. and you know your basics are right the approach you are going through is right but what i made sure was that i did not break my preparation in between one should do is that if uh, he or she is uh, you know attempting just 10 questions do it in quiz format those testimonials only that egmat is uh, is uh, a one stop solution for all your gmat needs hello everyone a very good morning good afternoon and good evening Thank you for joining us. Today we have with us Shikin, who scored a GMAT seven twenty on his recent attempt. So welcome, Shikin, and thank you for joining in today. Uh, hi, Abhat. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me for the interview. And yeah, good morning. Good morning. So, Shikin, why don't you introduce yourself and give us a little bit details about your background? Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, my name is Shikin. Gupta and uh, I am uh, I am a computer science uh, graduate from National Institute of Technology Hamirpur and uh, I uh, worked in Nuja Software. It's a software based company and for for around two and a half years there and then I transitioned to my family business which is in automobile domain. Okay. So yeah, uh, in between that process only I started my GMAT preparation. and uh, it has been a good journey uh, from there on yes yes so uh, shikin when did you exactly start your preparations and how did you narrow down to eg math in the beginning okay so um, uh, i started my preparation in 2021 uh, mm-hmm. basically the serious preparation started in the month of june only but uh, i got to know about gmat uh, gmat and i went through the uh, co- uh, structure of gmat how uh, is the exam and what what are the parameters that we are tested upon mm. so uh, then i uh, got to know about e gmat from gmat club actually i uh, read the testimonials there and uh, i came to know uh, through those testimonials only that egmat is uh, is uh, a one stop solution for all your gmat needs and uh, basically i what i was struggling with was verbal only that i thought uh, needed uh, much more attention quant was uh, decent so then uh, i enrolled for gmat and uh, egmat and uh, i uh, Uh, I scheduled a counseling session uh, with one of the consult the consultants here at EGMAT, mm. and then I was uh, clear that uh, I would want to continue with EGMAT only my preparation. So yeah, after that call, I was sure that EGMAT was what I wanted through my uh, preparation journey. Okay, great, great. Day. So, Shikin, when you started on the platform, right? You took the first mock. Where, when we go back, we see you landed up with a five eighty score. But that was just a starting mock, right? So we understand that was your back then ability. Okay, mm-hmm. with a V twenty eight and a Q forty two. Okay. Yeah. So after that, what was the course of action that you did? Uh, how did you get started with the course? Okay. So yeah, uh, for uh, the first mock test that I gave, uh, uh, my quant score was also not good at that time. I was I was struggling with the data sufficiency was uh, new to me. So yeah, I just gave the first uh, sigma mock without any preparation. So I I was sure that quant will be not uh, you know uh, I'll not uh, struggle through the quant section. But yeah, going through the uh, Uh, I remember that in the verbal, I was not all, able to complete the mock test all all the questions also. So mm-hmm. I struggled with the timing uh, timing uh, strategy uh, that uh, I you know gave the mock with. So uh, uh, also the sentence correct. I uh, I came to know that sentence correction and critical reasoning were uh, 
my weak areas and i need to work upon them Hmm. so uh, i remember that after my first first sigma i uh, talked to the consultant here at egmat and they made uh, my plan that uh, what what should be the course of action and how should i proceed from there on mm-hmm. so yeah i i worked upon those points and i was able to improve my score in uh, the coming uh, mock tests yep yeah uh so she can uh, you know because you know you started with your preparation uh, from a very scratch right yeah. so you took that 580 mock then you did the course and since you yourself mentioned that verbal was an area of concern specifically in sc and cr so what were the changes that you started feeling after doing the course uh, what were the difference in the approach that you saw which made you know the score also improve gradually okay <clears throat> so uh, i'll just uh, tell you uh, section wise for verbal yeah. that what what uh, i changed my pro- process so for the sentence correction uh, when i i started with sentence correction at eg mat mm. so as told by the consultant here so mm. uh, sentence correction uh, the way the course is structured that they uh, build your basics first the, the logic the logical thinking that you need for the sentence correction because i think that sentence correct correction is not uh, overall gmat is not just about cramming up things and just you know uh, going for the exam it's not a traditional exam it's much more of your uh, uh, this uh, logical uh, logical reasoning so mm. you have to approach in that way so for sentence correction i went through the videos the course and the quizzes that were uh, after after each uh, each module uh, mm. so gradually my accuracy started increasing uh, in <clears throat> in those uh, quizzes mm. so here i got to know that uh, yeah i i was proceeding in the right direction and uh, yeah this course is helping me mm. so uh, sentence correction the basics that i uh, uh, got to know from eg mat they were really helpful and uh, coming to the critical reasoning uh, main uh, the main uh, problem was the timing part because critic mm-hmm. we can think, if we are thinking of a question we can do it in you know uh, 10 to 12 minutes it, it was taking me 10 to 12 minutes initially to do mm-hmm. uh, each question uh, of uh, medium or hard difficulty so uh, the way the pre thinking concept is told there uh, that you have to just stop and uh, think about the possible scenarios and the all the uh, you know they have uh, covered in in the videos that really helped me yeah it took time to build that concept but uh, yeah. at the end when i saw my accuracy getting to uh, you know 80 to 90% and uh, time for average time for each question you know dro- dropping Uh, under two minutes, so mm. I was I was sure that uh, this uh, I am on the right track here also in critical reasoning. Mm. And uh, coming to the uh, reading comprehension, uh, what my approach initially was that I used to read questions and then the passage. Mm. So EGMAT changed my uh, uh, that uh, that approach and uh, how to read the passage, how to. you know take the information overload over there and you know th- the pre thinking concept that uh, i learned in uh, critical reasoning i applied mm-hmm. in uh, reading comprehension also so yeah uh, uh, all in uh, these three sections my uh, accuracy increased and also the t- t- time for each question that dropped uh, mm-hmm. to uh, considerable values so yeah this way egmat helped me in verbal mm-hmm. and in for the quant uh, section uh, my main focus was data sufficiency so uh, in data sufficiency the way uh, i used to ask a lot of questions uh, uh, from the smes for the data sufficiency part so first i was thinking that this question might be wrong the uh, my approach is wrong but the way they uh, told me that uh, what uh, the approach should be and Uh, how you should approach the question and uh, also i think that the verbal the skills are gained in the verbal section that help me in uh, uh, quant section also because you know where you have you have to stop you know what the sentence structure of uh, the questions in quant also uh, is there 
so you know how where to stop after every punctuation mark and uh, you know uh, gather that information that helped me in con section also so yeah uh, this way egmat helped me yeah so once you're done the course right and you were doing those practice questions as well yeah so what was your revision strategy because you know once you move from section to section it does become overwhelming right you are learning a lot of new information such as from sc to cr also right yeah so how did you constantly stay in touch with your previous <clears throat> subsections how were you revising through it okay so uh, the approach that i followed was not a traditional approach that the note making you take a notebook and uh, you know you make the notes what i did was i purchased the flash cards uh, the small flash cards that uh i pressed purchase them from amazon and you know i just uh, made uh, when i was going through the videos uh, at in verbal or in quant also on the uh, uh, one side of the flash card i used to write uh, each concept as a question like uh, in in sc what is the difference between you you know like uh, like versus such way you, you have to use it and on the back side i used to write the explanation like uh, what is the usage of this what is the usage of the other thing so that helped me because uh, i used to carry my flash cards with me one two three flash card so it was a good go, uh, go through process that you are revising whenever you are having free time also when i looked at the flash cards uh, first i looked at the question that this is the question then that was posed a question as a question to me also so that revision thing uh, helped me the flash card that i made uh, so those helped me and uh, they were section wise like sc cr rc all those section wise so this was my revision strategy because i am not a person who does a lot of hard work in you know making the notes writing everything and so those were the bullet points that i made and the flash they they must be 50 to 60 flash cards and they were easy mm. to revise also before the uh, actual gmat you were given so yeah this was my revision strategy okay so she can everyone talks about error logs right while preparing because they help you identify your mistakes or process right so was it something that you also constantly maintained or flash cards were good enough for you i maintained a error log i mm. you know downloaded a, a excel sheet I, there was a G, on the gmat club i got the error log you know the, the all the parameters that they were testing through and so i maintained an excel sheet and every question that i was uh, uh, you know going through i maintained the error log from the if i am uh, on the og then i used to write the serial number and the page number and then maintain the error log in that way and mm. from the egmat egmat maintains its error log so you have all the quizzes so you do not need to maintain a error log for the scholarium part you are doing yep so yeah so uh, this way the question that i was uh, doing from gmat club and uh, official guide i maintained error log for that but okay. for the for the scholarium part error log is maintained in your uh, egmat portal only so mm -hmm. i did maintain error log for that okay okay and when did you decide because i know that 720 was your recent attempt but before that also you had taken a few attempts right yeah. so yeah. now when you look back into your journey what was the major challenges that you were actually facing that was not you know being a hurdle to cross that 700 barrier for you what were the issues that you faced previously yeah so first issue was the verbal section only because i knew i need to work upon my verbal section to uh, cross that 700 barrier so uh, that was one thing that i was uh, struggling through the other was uh, mm, other was the time management because i was i was not able in my uh, some of the mocks i was not you know able to complete my mock exam my verbal section only i was not able to complete the 36 questions given so the timing strategy i maintained i changed my timing strategy when i gave a gmat attempt and i uh, scored around 640 i think and after that i knew that i i need to change my uh, timing uh, strategy i need to change how i give the exam so i changed that i didn't maintain that uh, i need to give 2 2 minutes to every question that 
I read somewhere that uh, you, uh, you have to maintain a table and then you know you uh, timing table on your scratch pad. So uh, that helped me. And the other thing was the score plateau that I hit the score plateau in uh, verbal also. I, I wasn't able to go beyond 34 at uh, V34 at one point. So there uh, came the analytics part of EGMAT and my error logs that uh, I constantly went through and uh, just saw that which questions I, I was doing wrong and what questions are my strong part. So uh, basically, I think GMAT is not uh, how many questions you are attempting and or how many videos are, are you watching. It's it's like uh, if you are doing just five questions a day, you must be sure that you uh, go through the explanation and you know your basics are right. The approach you are going through is right. So that helped me cross the 700 barrier. So yeah, uh, that was, that was mm -hmm. it. So I think she can very rightly said because, you know, it's not about just focusing on what you're getting right. You have to also judge if you're getting them right using the right process and the methods or not. Right. Yeah. So talking about the mocks, because, you know, they play a very crucial role as you come close to the exam. Right. So what was your strategy for mocks? And because you mentioned that, you know, you started managing your time. You understood when to let go of questions, which is, again, a very crucial strategy. Right. When to move on. So how did you place your mocks? How many mocks did you take before this exam? And how did you go about preparing for it? See, I took a lot of mocks. So mm -hmm. five Sigma mocks. And there are some uh, free mocks that are uh, available. So I didn't uh, go through. Uh, and I also uh, gave the official uh, GBAT mocks that uh, uh, one to six that I gave. So uh, basically, I gave those free mocks not just for the question practice but just to build the stamina that i need on the day of gmat exam and if you have a gap in giving your mocks that stamina breaks down so i just sat i sat with the mindset that i am giving the actual mock and i uh, gave those mocks irrespective of the scores or the scoring criteria the other sites were using the those free mocks I just used to uh, give them and uh, go through the questions afterwards for the EGMAT the Sigma mocks I used judicially I didn't waste I didn't want to waste them so yeah there was a, a time gap when I uh, uh, gave the Sigma mocks but those really helped me to you know uh, 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 gain the uh, right uh, uh, aspect of what I am aiming to and what uh, at what point I am. So I think the uh, Sigma mocks are the true representation of, of your level that you have reached because uh, the previous attempts that I gave, I in total I gave four attempts uh, of GMAT. So uh, I uh, what I was scoring in my Sigma mocks, I was scoring in my uh, this uh, GMAT exam. So, uh, and the first pre-mock that uh, EGMAT offers, I gave it two to three times. It, it The question changed also. So, I just used to give, whenever I exhausted my five Sigma mocks, I used to give it just to build my stamina. But there were new questions also. So, the last uh, score that I scored on the Sigma mock was was within 10 to, uh, I think 20, 20 points in range with the, with the Sigma mock uh, I gave. So yeah, this was my strategy for uh, for the mock test. Okay. So uh, Shikin, you know, uh, firstly, like now, since you have given the exam, right? Let's talk about the test day experience because you have given it a few times. Like you said, this was your fourth attempt, right? So what are the things that one must be careful? And like, were all these attempts offline attempts or they were online also? For they you were a mix of online and offline. Okay. So what were the things that, you know, you would suggest that everyone has to be careful from your own experience? Yeah. So <clears throat> the one thing that one must figure out is which pattern suits you best. Is it yes. online or offline? Because from my personal experience, the online uh, pattern su uh, suited me mm -hmm. at last. 
Hmm. So uh, that is purely a personal preference because uh, you 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 will come to know if if you are aiming for one or two attempts. If you do not get the uh, desired score in the first attempt, then you can go. Uh, when you are going for the another attempt, you can change your pattern. Hmm. So the I figured that online attempt was uh, was uh, you know uh, I was able to score more in that and I was more comfortable with that. So first thing uh, uh, was this only. The another thing that uh, uh, I, you know, in my first two attempts I did was I, I, I was very much conscious and, you know, that exam mm -hmm. stress. And I was just cramming, cramming up those, uh, not cramming up, but revising those concepts before the exam also and before one hour of exam also. Mm -hmm. So I think that works against you you need to be calm you just give your uh, last mock test within a week or you know mm. just don't give a mock test before one or two days of the exam mm. this is from a personal experience and the, another thing is that on the exam day uh, you should not go with the mindset of you know uh, 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 that you have to reach that score like you have to reach the uh, you have to cross the 700 barrier you have to reach 750 don't don't go with that mindset mm -hmm. because when uh, you come up with the questions there and you are not able to uh, uh, do the hard questions that things come in your mind uh, that thing come in in your mind that i might not be able to reach that score that i am aiming for mm -hmm. So basically, go, I went uh, uh, for uh, my two uh, GMAT attempts. I with uh, I went with this uh, mindset only. Mm -hmm. So that worked against me. So mm -hmm. I changed my mindset. I just uh, I what what I aimed for was the accuracy. Like uh, in the SC, I cannot uh, afford more than two or three questions wrong like this. Mm -hmm. I went with this strategy. And this helped me because there I was at my 100% uh, concentration level. So there I knew that I don't want to, if I'm, uh, you know, uh, having the, uh, if I'm taking the high level uh, SC question or any question I'm taking. So, and I'm not able to do that right. If if it seems difficult, then I, I used to, uh, you know, leave it, mm. make a wild guess. But mm. that uh, that thing was ba in my uh, back of my mind that the another question I want to do it right because I cannot afford these much wrong questions. Mm. So that pushed me in between exam uh, in between the sections also. So yeah, this was a strategy that I changed and that helped me. Mm. Yeah. And uh, Shikin, what about the hourly commitments, right? Because, you know, when you are a working professional and you're managing your work as well as the GMAT preparations, it can get very overwhelming and, you know, tedious also at point, right? Yeah. So what was your usual day like? How much hours would you usually spend in your preparation? So uh, when I was in the preparation phase, like I was going through the videos, through the course, I used to spend around two to three hours uh, a day okay. and on the weekends uh, uh, there was a mix of mock tests analyzing the mock tests and doing mm. practicing the question it went to four to five hours a day also okay. so yeah but what I think is that we start with a mindset of doing these much questions completing these much videos that mm -hmm. That goes, uh, you know, against against us because we are not able to maintain our notes, uh, or mm -hmm. we are not able to grasp as much information that we need to, because everything said in the videos of EGMAT is is crucial. You you need to have concentration for that, because those are the concepts that you need to build upon. You cannot afford to, you know, you just start a course and then you your mind is somewhere else. So. It's not the early commitment, I think, but the uh, the uh, deadline that you have set for your GMAT exam that pushes you. And uh, yeah, you, but what I made sure was that I did not break my preparation in between. Yeah, yeah. there was uh, some time uh, that in, in between my GMAT attempts that my preparation was broken off. But in my preparation phase, I 
if if i am studying for uh, you know half an hour only so i used to make sure that i uh, in a day i i manage my time in such a way that if i am revising my flash cards only that i have made i am doing that if i am not uh, uh, watching any video but there was not a break uh, in my day that i am not practicing for gmat mm-hmm. because the mindset you are in that uh, once it breaks off you it takes time to come into that mindset yes so, yeah that was my strategy okay great great uh, so she can let's talk about the last attempt right the 720 attempt so when did you decide that you know you are actually ready because definitely if you are a person who has given previous attempts right there is a lot of hesitance like when to book the test date next you have to be completely prepared for it right yeah. so what were the indicators that you start seeing that you thought that it's time that you know you give it that attempt and just see how that goes yeah so uh, basically the first indicator is your accuracy uh, oh. that uh, the questions you are practicing the quizzes you are giving the accuracy oh. that and the error log also you are maintaining so i use a column of accuracy also i used the excel uh, formula and you know uh, went through the accuracy so when you reach that accuracy in every section you know that you can do these questions because uh, those questions are also made on the lines of gmat only hmm. so you know that you if you need to hit uh, to hit this score you need this much accuracy the first parameter i use is the, is the accuracy only the second is uh, the mock test uh, basically when you give 3 to 4 mock tests you and you are scoring in that range uh, for the score you are uh, aiming for uh, in 10 to 20 range uh, downside or upside you know that you are ready for that and you know your score Uh, uh, apart from uh, external circumstances that you face your score will will be in that range only mm-hmm. so yeah uh, i think mock tests are the best indicator uh, for mm-hmm. uh, for your preparation that you need you are ready to book your exam yes. so when i hit the score uh, in my last mock uh, i think it was 730 or 740 mm-hmm. so i knew that i, I was ready and i cannot push it more further because yeah, yeah i i need to uh, start my application process also so yeah then i just booked my exam and then i gave it okay okay yeah. now coming to the test day right so when you were giving the exam how did you decide which section to start with and how was your experience on the test day okay so uh, i all always went with uh, verbal first then quant and then okay. ir and awa because uh, in the uh, when you start with uh, with your test you are fresh you are with a fresh mind so okay. and verbal needs uh, uh, because quant was uh, my you know uh, uh, in comparison to uh, verbal it it it, it was uh, good so okay. i started with i in every gmat i and in every mock test that i gave i started with verbal only okay so when uh, the verbal uh, i you know the first question that came to me and there were times in my attempts that the first question i thought was uh, difficult and i did not do it right mm. there i did not uh, you know uh, i i i was uh, i was like uh, that this if if this is wrong uh, if 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 it it might be difficult it might be difficult to everyone that is giving that is facing this question mm. uh, so yeah so there were another 35 questions that i need to go through yes. so yeah that mindset because if you uh, break off your mindset in between the exam or in the uh, first for, uh, 10 questions then your verbal section goes off it, it mm. you cannot gain that strength to uh, you know maintain that time and accuracy yes so on the test day i was calm uh, i just uh, booked my slot it was online so mm. uh, and i made sure that uh, the uh, the time that i was giving the mock test i booked the slot in that time only for my okay. exam that exam mm-hmm. because uh, I, my body was conditioned i Uh, i had my breakfast i, I think it was 11:30 uh, mm-hmm. 11:30 slot so yeah uh, i knew that 
I need to book in 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 that slot only. Hmm. So I I was calm. I I just uh, went. I managed my uh, the room, uh, all the uh, table and my laptop, and there were some prerequisites that you need to go through before the exam. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and uh, the uh, the proctor was also uh, decent and. Uh, she made sure that uh, there was no disturbance and if any difficulty I was facing. So uh, she made sure that I do not face any dif difficulty. Mm -hmm. So it was a good experience. And mm -hmm. uh, when uh, I tried, uh, I went through uh, from verbal to the quant and there was a break in between. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, uh, went out and just for two to three minutes took deep breaths that uh, yeah verbal section is fine what happened was fine now i have to uh, uh, do my best in the con section and yes. I got everything now. and what was your reaction when that score finally came on the screen so actually uh, previous to my 720 attempt my 700 uh, i scored 710 so that yeah. was the first time i crossed a 700 barrier Hmm. So, uh, in my 700 attempt, my my reaction was much of, much of a surprise than in the 720 because I, hmm. I I knew that I had my 710 score at that time, so hmm. uh, there was nothing more to lose to. But in my 710 attempt, I was much surprised when I saw, and I was it was a relief, a bit relief that at least 700 barrier has been crossed. Yes, but the window uh, that opened for a short period of time i uh, so you know i was not able to uh, uh, i did not know what i scored in the section uh, mm -hmm. in verbal and quant so when the official report came then i saw that uh, this was my section breakup and uh, actually i have scored this much so yeah it was a good experience was indeed indeed so uh you know Shikin, what would be those few things that you know you collect recollect from your journey right because there'll be a lot of students who have just started their preparations and they might be starting with a similar score like yours closer to 600 right and really wanting that 700 plus score on their final test so what are the few things that you recollect from this journey and you would like to share saying that you know th these are the tips that one must be careful about yeah so the one thing is that uh, what I think and what I did was that, uh, you know, I went after quantity versus quality. So yeah. I, I went uh, after I need to do 30 questions of uh, SC on a weekend. I, I In one sitting, I need to do that. But what one should do is that if uh, he or she is, uh, you know, attempting just 10 questions, do it in quiz format. Don't mm -hmm. do format because okay. that helps. That helps you build the stamina. That helps you gain the insights that, that uh, the timing you need to reach uh, for your actual GMAT. So that helps you. And the other thing is that analyze each and every question. Don't just analyze the questions that you are uh, doing wrong. Analyze your right questions for the uh, for the technique for the approach that you are following and what approach uh, the one who has said the question or the SMEs here at EG where they are uh, you know providing yeah. so when uh, because it can be a guess also if you are doing a right question it can be it, it can be a wild guess or if your do if your approach doesn't match then it it can be a havoc on on your actual GMAT day also so if you just uh, go through the go through the approach methodology that you need to follow the right approach for each and every section that you are going through and the other thing is that once you have done all the videos once uh, you have uh, finished your course i would suggest that just give your 40 percent of the total time to your revision because mm -hmm. You will yes. revise gradually when you are going, you are practicing the questions and give 60 to 70 percent of your major of major time to the practicing part. And from that also give, give uh, you know, uh, a major chunk of your time 
for the analysis because mm -hmm. that really helps you that you need to if you need to cross that score barrier or uh, the plateau that you you because everyone reaches a score plateau that yes. can be, that can be uh, you know uh, at at any stage of, of your preparation so there the analytics only help there you know uh, nobody can help you because you know yourself better at that point of time that where you are lacking mm -hmm. and yeah just be in touch with the uh, with the consultants with the smes because and just uh, if if you if the question seems silly in your mind it doesn't matter just ask it because it will mm -hmm. help you but you you might be you know going through that uh, uh, question on a uh, actual gmat day also so it doesn't matter how, what is the question and uh, how much silly it, it sounds in your mind just ask it and yeah. you, know, you you will get get help yes. so yeah so this is my strategy and this really helped me uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, reach my score so this is yeah. all what uh, i wanted to do share and what i wanted to tell my fellow mates and uh, who are starting the gmat journey or mm. the gmat journey is going on right now yes yes i think she can you really pointed out the main essence and the gist right and you put it really uh, well across saying that the important points are you know focusing on the process right mm -hmm. and it's not a matter of how much accuracy you're getting you also have to look back and learn and do the strategic yeah. review understand that you know even if it's an 80 person don't get satisfied you have to understand that how to level up that 80 percent right yes, and yes. if you've got that 80 percent have you got it using the right approach or not what are the methods right and yes. like you said earlier also in the interview consistency you maintain that consistency throughout the preparations and i think it eventually paid out for you right yes. while you know there were a few attempts but you could identify what was going wrong previously maybe the verbal plateau that you got stuck yes. right the eventually you were able to tackle those weak areas and improve right yes. so i think it was a very interactive session uh Shikin, and i'm sure the, the you know the way you have answered these questions are uh, some of the very important tricky things that everyone ponders about right mm -hmm. everyone wants to know how to tackle these things be it your test readiness your time management so i think we have covered all of it and so i'd really like to thank you and thank you for giving us the time today thank you, thank you so much Thank you. Thank you for having me on board. Yes. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you.